I was recently asked if I could produce a capacitive touch circuit using the least number of components, make it as cheap as possible, uh, something that would work over a wide voltage range, it needs to go into a product that's going to be a fit and forget solution, so it has to be fairly robust. I thought my starting point would be to try and find out how much capacitance the human body actually generates, and uh, two possible ways of doing that. One is to use uh, a filter which has got a capacitance you're going to modify the other option would be a, an oscillator so on this breadboard I've rigged up a very simple 555 timer it's currently oscillating at about 633 Hz and uh, this piece of brass is going to be my touch plate and if I touch that the frequency drops to about 625 Hz so that's a very very insignificant change I'm using a 10 nanofarad capacitor at the moment and the resistors are 100k and 2k2 clearly the human body does not produce as much as 10 nanofarads so uh, I'll drop that value down a little bit and see what difference that makes with a 0.1 nanofarad that's 100 picofarads the oscillation frequency has gone up to about 48 kilohertz and now when I touch the plate it drops to about 29 kilohertz so that's a far more significant change, almost half in fact, going from say 50 down to 25. So that suggests that I'm producing roughly the same order of capacitance as the capacitor that's in there. So I'm producing and getting on for 100 nanofarads. I think if I drop the picofarad, sorry. So I think if I drop that down slightly lower still, uh, we might get an even better response than that. And for my third attempt, I'm now down to a 47 picofarad capacitor, oscillating at about 80 kilohertz, and when I touch the plate, that drops to about 40 kilohertz. So that suggests I'm producing round about 50 picofarads of capacitance. So that's my baseline figure that I've got to work with. All I've now got to do is come up with a circuit that's going to make use of that, such that I can trigger a switch somewhere else. This is the circuit that I've come up with. Since I'm going to need an oscillator to generate a variable frequency when I touch the sensor plate and uh, some sort of filter to be able to distinguish between the two frequencies and then probably some sort of comparator at the end to check the output against the reference voltage, all three of these things can be done with an op-amp. So to keep things cheap and simple, uh, I could use something like an LM324 quad op-amp I can use the remaining op amp as a, a double buffer on the comparator stage or possibly a, a second stage in the filter. The circuit looks fairly complicated when drawn out like this, but if we have a look at the three independent stages, it might make a little bit more sense. This is the oscillator stage. I'm assuming we're going to be running on about 5 volts and a bit of decoupling across the supply. Uh, it's a fairly standard circuit, a relaxation oscillator. We've simply got a capacitor and a resistor here through which the capacitor charges. And when it reaches the reference voltage on the non-inverting input, uh, it will start to discharge because the output will go low. Uh, one issue with this circuit is the LM324 uh, will run off a single supply and these oscillators generally are run off a split supply. To compensate for that, we basically need to create a virtual ground here at the non-inverting input so uh, a fairly high level divider here 100k and 100k that will give us a 2.5 volt nominal reference there and as the output swings high and low this resistor here will just modify that voltage accordingly which allows the thing to oscillate uh, another slight issue with this is the fact that we're not taking into account the capacitance of the breadboard uh, it's likely to be some tens of picofarads and so that's going to affect the values that we're actually going to get in practice. I'm assuming here that we've got a 50 picofarad, 47 picofarad capacitor in the circuit and I'm touching it to give us 100 picofarad and if we look at how this oscillates uh, basically we get a nice not quite rail to rail output. The uh, 324 op amps can only go to about 1.5 volts below the supply voltage, in this case the SPI simulation is saying we're going up to 4, I don't expect we'll get quite that high in reality, and if we have a look at a quick Fourier analysis of that, we can see that we're oscillating at around 30 to 40 kilohertz, again 
that may be slightly different in practice but we'll build it on the breadboard and see what we get. This is our oscillator circuit on the breadboard uh, using a 358 op amp I couldn't find any 324s so I'm using the dual version rather than the quad version uh, we've got our voltage divider here 100k and 100k which creates our uh, virtual ground at about 2.5 volts we're running off 5 volts nominal uh, we've got uh, a little bit of decoupling, decoupling capacitor here this is our 22k resistor as we saw in the spy simulation and our 47 uh, 4k7 sorry resistor there and this is our output capacitor for 47 picofarads uh, on this scope we're getting about 26 kilohertz when I'm not touching the sensor and when I touch it I'm dropping down to about 15 so this is not quite consistent with what the spy simulation said we would get it was saying we should be getting about 4 volts maximum we're actually getting 3.8 and it was saying that we should be getting a frequency of 45 kilohertz I think and uh, obviously we're out by a factor of 2 here so we'll probably need to tweak the spy simulation just so that it's consistent with the actual values we're getting but the oscillator is working fine and uh, we can use that to go into our next stage the filter and discriminate between the 25 kilohertz and the 15 kilohertz since the spice model was a little bit out compared to what we actually saw on the breadboard I've simply modified R1 here from 22k up to 100k and that seems to pull the frequency back to where we would expect it to be we were getting about 25 kilohertz on the breadboard this model is saying about 27 which is close enough and if we modify this to 100 picofarads this particular model says that we should be getting about 16 kilohertz which again is consistent with what we were getting on the breadboard so the model's a little bit out but uh, just trimming this resistor value here uh, help sort that problem out so now we can proceed to the next stage and have a look at how the filter is going to work this is our high pass filter stage of the circuit uh, this is the oscillator uh, using the 47 picofarad capacitor this is assuming I'm not touching the sensor and the uh, 100k uh, which I've inserted in here just to make sure that the output for this is consistent with what we're getting on the breadboard the filter itself is uh, a high pass uh, Chebyshev design uh, it's basically two cascaded high pass filters with some feedback from the op amp uh, plenty of information on the internet about how to uh, design these things basically this network divider here resistor divider here this resistor needs to be about 11 percent higher so uh, call it 10% then I can build that out of a 4k7 and a 470k, uh, 470 ohm resistor uh, there's a bit of filtering on the output just to stabilize the output trade off here if I have this capacitor a bit larger I'll get a flatter response but it will take longer to reach that level uh, 4.7 microfarads is probably about right and if we run this simulation and have a look at what output we're getting uh, this is saying about leveling off at three and a bit volts uh, a little bit over 3.2 which is fine so if we set our reference voltage on the comparator stage at three volts which we can do with a uh, a 20k and a 30k or a two, uh, 2k2, 22k, 33k something like that uh, that will give us a reference voltage of about, point, uh, of about three volts and this is obviously above it when we're not touching our sensor so if I modify this value to 100 picofarads to simulate what happens when I touch it and run it again, this uh, tray should drop slightly below 3 volts and it appears to be doing so, about 2.7ish. So basically when the sensor is touched, the output will be below 3 volts and when the sensor is not touched, it will be slightly above 3 volts. So a simple comparator on the end here should be sufficient to allow us to discriminate the two. So all we've got to do now is build this on the breadboard and see how far off we are. We may need to tweak these values. Uh, tweaking C2 and C3 will allow us to just get this thing working correctly for the frequency that we're getting out of the actual device on the breadboard. I've now built the circuit up on the breadboard. It's starting to look a little bit messy. This is our uh, output 
filter capacitor 4.7 microfarads all the resistors are as they were in the spy simulation but I've upped the capacitors on the input to 22 nanofarads from the 12 nanofarads that were specified it seems we're actually getting a much better output than I was expecting uh, the oscilloscope is telling us we're getting a little under 500 millivolts with nothing touching the plate and as soon as I put my fingers on it it goes up to about 3 volts so that's quite a large range and very very easy to discriminate using a comparator in fact that's such a robust signal you probably wouldn't even need a comparator stage and you could just feed that into an output transistor or something uh, to do whatever is needed further on in the circuit but we'll complete the mission and feed that into a comparator just so that we can check that everything works pretty reliably and we should get a slightly less ripply voltage in fact if I remove the output capacitor we can have a look at what we're getting that's without anything touching the plate and we're getting a bit of ripple on the output at 19, 20 kilohertz and when I touch it we're up to around about 12, down to 12 and a half kilohertz so there is quite a bit of discrimination going on in that uh, two-pole Chebyshev filter it's got a pretty good brick wall response really, the high frequency component is coming through largely unattenuated, we're getting a maximum of 3.8 volts which is what we were getting out of the oscillator and uh, at the slightly lower frequencies it's attenuating it down to a peak of 1.12 volts so not bad, I suspect the capacitance of the breadboard may be having an impact on this but otherwise I'm quite pleased with that, we can now feed that into another 358 comparator uh, op amp and use it as a comparator and get a really nice clean output. Okay this is the final section of the circuit I've added another 358 op amp which I'm simply using as a comparator the digital scope is showing the output from the filter stage which is going from about 0.5 volts up to about 3 volts average uh, and the bottom scope, the analog scope is showing the output from the uh, op amp we're using as a comparator and as you can see the analog scope is a little bit more responsive than the newfangled digital ones so it's showing a very very clear signal response slightest touch on the plate and it's picking that up and triggering to full scale there is a bit of filtering on the output I've added a 4.7 microfarad capacitor just as a filter so this isn't exactly the same as I showed on the spy simulation but uh, it's pretty close. The spy simulation really just demonstrated the principle of the thing. It was uh, inevitable we were going to have to change a few of the component values, but essentially all I've changed here is one resistor and a couple of capacitors. Just increase their values very slightly and the circuit works. I think for the final version on, uh, on a uh, proper printed circuit board, uh, we're going to find that the, the uh, values of the resistors and capacitors may need to change again slightly. Uh, but we can perhaps deal with that by putting a couple of trimmer resistors in there, a couple of trim pots, multi-turns, and just trim the thing out once it's actually in situ. But apart from that, it's fairly robust and works okay. So there's a very simple, cheap, effective, capacitive touch circuit. And this is the final circuit. According to the SPI simulation, it shouldn't work, but on the breadboard it does. That shows the reality between computer modeling and the real world uh, this value here uh, needs to be changed to make the circuit run in SPICE and these two capacitors need changing to make it run in SPICE I suspect that uh, if we try this on a different voltage we'll also need to make a few tweaks but uh, apart from that everything checks out